Hey, what's up? David here with After Video Effects, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be creating a tree forest fog composite uh, using Blender and After Effects. So, I'll show you uh, just some of the tricks uh, I've used and just some of the things I learned just to really sell the vision that I had in my mind. Uh, but first, let's take a look at what we're going to be creating. Okay, so let's get to it. So first thing first is is I created this uh, plane here. It's basically a uh, landscape and I just adjusted the height of the terrain and just like uh, maybe just like the like the bump of like how I want I just wanted to create like a subtle rough uh, surface here and then what I did was I used the geometry node setup to get my uh, trees into place here. So let me show you the setup for that. So this is my node setup for the geometry nodes. So what I've got here is my distribute points on face and set that through uh, instances on points. And then the instance is this tree collection that I have that I downloaded from TurboSquid. I'll leave a link where you could download for it. So it's this collection here, and I'll just want to pin that just to be sure. And then that's set through the instance, and I select a pick instance so that uh, it will randomize the trees rather than the collection itself. So that way it's not instancing as a collection, but instancing as like each individual tree inside the collection. Okay, and then I didn't, I used to. I just put that through a set position. Um, I didn't really change the settings for it, but uh, initially I did, but I just left it there just in case I needed it. And then going, that's set through a join geometry node. Um, okay, so for the instance in some point, I wanted to randomize the scale. So I put a random value through that. And I want to randomize this rotation as well. However, I only wanted to randomize a the Z axis. So I put that through a combined X, Y, Z, uh, and then put the random value through the Z. So this uh, our node here is basically an extension for the rotation. And then I set this through, the density is through a multiply factor. And then the dense fac density factor is actually the heat map that I generated. So if you come into my vertex group, so you can see the tree density. Uh, let's have a look here, white paint. Yeah, so you can see here the white paint is driving the factor for how the trees are basically shown on the plane. So I'm using that density factor in here. Okay. All right, so that's the geometry node set up for the trees. Um, and then I added some bushes here. So in case you don't have a look, the bushes is pretty much the same setup for the um, trees here. Uh, a little bit of modifications with the scale and the distribution. Okay. So something like that. So this is actually just set on a plane and then I just like didn't really put join geometry because I didn't really want to see the um the plane. Same goes for some of my sticks. So I'll show you that as well. So that's my node setup for my sticks and that's the node setup for my bush. Okay. And I'll just turn on screen keys so that you can see things. Okay, so that's my um, setup for the uh, just like just like the assets for my forest. Anything I need for the forest. Uh, the way I imported it through Blender is actually quite interesting. 
So I imported my assets through this add-on, Sketchfab. So all it is is that uh, I can import through a URL. Oh, I have to activate it. And then, so I entered the URL for the, each of the bushes and the sticks into here. And then I can just import it with one click and then it imports automatically. So, so just to give you an example for how to import it. So what you do is you import from URL, copy the link and then just hit import. And that should take a few seconds. And there you go, there's your import model. Uh, that's the bush, so it's very large, so you'll have to uh, adjust it. But uh, I just wanted to show you how I imported it. Okay, so I basically did that for the bushes and the sticks. The trees are from Turbo Squid, so I had to import that manually uh, through OBJ file. So yeah, uh, moving on to my smoke particles. So let me show you the smoke plane. Uh, so if I just go into the setup here. So this is my node setup for the um, plane here. So let me show you in rendered view. So it's fairly subtle, but if I just change this to uh, transparent. So you can see what's happening here. So what I've got is a mix shader that's through an emission and transparent. And the factor that's driving it is uh, a noise texture and a gradient texture that's feeding through a color ramp and a multiply node. And this is just the mapping node. Okay, so if you want to have a look, that is the node setup for the uh, texture hint. I've actually used this uh, node setup for my sunset tutorial. So if you want to have a look at that, you can go right ahead and click the link in the description below. But going back to our scene here. Um, okay, so that is the plain texture. And then what I did was I created a, another plane and I didn't use geometry nodes this time because I just decided to use a particle system instead. So if I just go back here, where is the, there it is. So I just used a particle system instead uh, because I couldn't be bothered to do more geometry nodes and I'll admit first, um, when I first started this, I did use particle systems and then I decided to learn geometry nodes. So I couldn't be bothered to change the smoke particles. So let me show you what I did. And if I just hide all of this. Okay, so this is just the particles itself. So it's basically a plane with the particle system set the uh, this is all pretty straightforward uh, the render object is the object smoke particle plane I'm using the object scale and I didn't really set a density for the vertex group I just let it uh, feed that through all the way um, the material for this is actually just a standard um, shader, principal shader, but I turned up, I turned down, sorry, turned down the alpha so that they're transparent and just turn up the uh, bounces for your transparent uh, render output. And then there you go, that is your smoke fog simulation here. Okay, so that's basically the setup for the forest. I'll show you what I did for the materials here so let's just jump into here so the volume is basically pretty straightforward just a principal volume uh, put that through a color ramp noise texture and a mapping node um, that's the node setup if you want to have a look 
I didn't set it too high, probably 0.3, maybe that's a little high, but I wanted a nice fog. Um, what else did I have here? The, the landscape mountain is actually just a standard setup for uh, the textures here. I did use polygons uber mapping because I wanted this mosaic rotation so I can rotate it, uh, randomize the rotation. So yeah, that was the randomized rotation. Standard stuff here, just, you know, you, know, you got your normal roughness displacement. Uh, diffuse and ambient occlusion. And I set that through here. So if you want to have a look at it, let's draw right here. Okay. I'll leave a link for where you could download the polygon uber mapping node as well. Uh, let's have a look here. The trees should be the same, should be imported automatically anyway. Um, what else is there? The sticks should be imported as well. Yeah, so pretty standard stuff for the sticks. And the bush is pretty much the same thing, but it's just got all this whack uh, alpha. It, it will be imported automatically anyway, so don't worry too much about it. Um, but if you look at this, it's pretty straightforward. Oh, it's, this is new. I've never seen that before. I might learn that. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the world settings. I did something a little different. So I combined this HDR through a mix node with the sky texture app for Blender and set that uh, blended in the background here. So if I just turn on my rendered view and turn off transparent. So you can see here, it's a little bit of a blend between the sky texture and the HDR. So if you look at the HDR itself, that's the HDR. And then if you look at the sky texture, that's pretty much it. And if I blend those two together, you get something like that. Okay. So that's what I did uh, for the world settings. Okay. Um... I might just quickly show you my animation here. So if we go into top view, if you look at my camera and the keyframes that I just imported here. So here's my keyframes for the camera setup. So I might just split another view here so you can see the camera view. So if you look here, have a look at this camera so as I scroll through the timeline you can see that I'm just going through here and I'm rotating the camera a little bit and you know just doing some regular camera animation so yeah that's pretty much it for the camera so if you look closely just at the camera so I'll scroll up through I'm just going along with this camera. Pretty short animation, but it gets the job done. Okay, so I might get to go through the compositing. So let's have a look at this. I might just do a quick render first of the one frame. So just be back in a second. Okay, so that's our render done. So we can just go back into our compositing tab. And I can just show you what I did here. So, all right, so we've got a bit of a setup here. So I might show you, don't worry about this part. This part was just, I decided to not put a flare in. So don't worry about that. All right, so let's have a look at this. So we've got an ellipse mask tool. And then I've got a blur and I blurred that out. So just blurt out the edges here. And then I'm feeding that through a multiply node. So we just get that 
nice uh, feather for uh, vignette and I just put the image on top. Next we've got a little bit of a color correction. So if you look at this, I blurred the edges for the glossy direct uh, pass and then I exposed that, gave it a bit of a tint here and I just set that through another uh, mix RGB. So, but this time I set it to uh, screen. Then I added a color balance just to do some color correction and a curves adjustment like that. Okay, so that is the node setup. So I'll try fit this in here. So yeah, that's the setup here. Um, might go up here as well. Okay. And I did a separate node for the Z depth. So let's have a look here. So what I've got here is the mist pass. So if you don't know where that is, you can just go down to your um, view layers and hit select mist. Put that through a normalize and the map range as well. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the Z depth. You can render that out at a very low quality because it's going to be set uh, as a blending mode in After Effects anyway. And you can render this out however high you want. I think I set mine to about 100 samples. I can't remember exactly. It did take a long time to render, so just keep that in mind as well. Uh, in the meantime, I can show you my render settings. So, yeah, that's light paths. Try to set it down to like a lower value, probably like maybe six to four, maybe. Uh, volumes. You know, I set the volumes the same, set it by default. I didn't turn on motion blur because it would uh, slow down my render time. Performance 1024 size, and I forgot to put it as medium high contrast. So, if you want to render this out, uh, be sure to set it to at least one of these <laughs> because I set it to none, and uh, well, I forgot to do that, <laughs> but. Anyway, if you wanted to uh, like change some of these, you can as well. All right, so once you've done that, you can go ahead and render it out. RGB, alpha, color depths. I put it as eight, and image sequence, render region, and that's it. You can go ahead and just render that out, and um, yeah, we can uh, go ahead and composite this in After Effects. So yeah, uh, join me in the next video where we will composite this in After Effects, maybe add some particles, uh, how, learn how we could use our Z-Depth as like a, f a further fog simulation, some color correction, depth of field, and all those good stuff. Okay, uh, thank you everyone. My name's David. I hope you learned interesting techniques that you can use for your own creations. Please give a like if you like this video so people can find it. Subscribe if you want to see more and be sure to hit that bell button to get the notifications. And comment down below if you have any questions. And I will see you in part 2 for this tutorial.